Hi everyone, let's look at vomiting reflex. Okay, so this vomiting reflex, it's also a motility uh, function of the GIT. So these are movements that we can see within the digestive system. Vomit. Okay. Uh, what is the definition of vomiting? Vomiting is uh, defined... Okay. Vomiting is defined as an outward expulsion of gastric contents through the esophagus, pharynx, and mouth. Vomiting is also known as emesis. This is the abnormal emptying of the stomach and upper part of the intestine through esophagus and uh, mouth. So the vomitus starts from the upper part of the intestine. Okay, we cannot vomit things which are in the large intestines or things in the colon. Okay, so it's just at the upper part, which is usually the duodenum, coming upwards until uh, the stomach. So those are the stuff that we can vomit. Okay, so it's an outward expulsion of gastric content. Uh, gastric content is just, um, what do we mean by gastric content? Is just substances that are in the, in the stomach. Okay, that's why... When you vomit, you lose a lot of uh, acids. Because remember, the stomach is acidic. Okay. You lose a lot of acids. So there's a tendency of a person suffering from alkalosis due to vomiting. It's the opposite with diarrhea. When you, di when you do diarrhea, uh, starting from the stomach downwards, from... Uh, after the stomach downwards, the pH there is alkaline. So you are, you are losing a lot of uh, alkaline uh, electrolytes like chlorides. So you, you have the tendency to suffer from acidosis. Okay. So vomiting, like any other uh, reflex, it follows what we call a reflex arc. So in, in, in any reflex, you need to identify... What is the stimulus? What factors stimulate vomiting? What are the receptors? The receptors, they convert the energy from the stimulus into an electrical signal. Okay, that's a function of the, stim of the receptor. It's a biological transducer. And then, uh, after the receptor, you need to identify the sensory neurons. Okay, the other name for sensory neurons are afferent fibers. They convey electrical impulse from the receptor to the center. So after you identify the sensory neurons, you need to identify what we call the center. The center can be the central nervous system. And we know that the central nervous system comprises the spinal cord and the brain. Now after information, this is an integrating center where there is processing and integration of information. So the information goes back to the effector via what you call the motor neuron. So you need to describe or identify the motor neuron. And then the motor neuron, these are effector organs. Effector organs are either muscles or glands. Okay, muscles can either be smooth muscles and uh, skeletal muscles. So even when you're describing the vomiting, reflex. You need to identify the stimulus, you need to identify the receptors, you need to identify the sensory fibers, you need to, or the afferent fibers, you need to identify the center, where is the information processed. And then from there you need to identify the motor neuron, which is also called efferent, efferent fibers. And then the effector, you need to identify the muscles involved, or if if it's a gland, you need to identify the gland involved. And then the response. This is what you can see. Okay. So, we'll start by describing what are the st stimulus to vomiting. Okay. What are the stimulus to vomiting? There are many factors that stimulate vomiting. There are many factors that stimulate vomiting. One, 
presence of irritating contents in the GI tract, mechanical stimulation of the pharynx, pregnancy, excess intake of alcohol, nauseating sight, odor or taste. There's also unusual stimulation of uh, labyrinthine apparatus, as in the case of uh, sea sickness, air sickness, or car sickness, or swinging. Okay. There's also abnormal stimulation of sensory receptors in other organs like the heart, the kidneys, semicircular canals, or the uterus. Drugs like antibiotics, opiates, they can stimulate vomiting. Any gastrointestinal disorders can stimulate vomiting. And then acute infections like urinary tract infection, influenza, ETC. Remember influenza is just a commonly, uh, it's commonly called the flu. It's a viral infection that attacks the respiratory system. It attacks the nose, the throat, and the lungs. So this can also trigger vomiting. And then we have metabolic disturbances like carbohydrates, starvation, and ketosis, uremia, hypercalcemia. All these are factors that can stimulate vomiting. Okay? But the most potent of these factors are irritations. Okay? These. Any, any irritation to do with the GIT. These uh, they are, the, they are the most potent stimulants to vomiting, any irritation within the GIT. Because when you look, vomiting somehow is a protective mechanism. Just like a cough. A cough tries to protect the respiratory system, even a sneeze. So you find in, even vomiting has a, has a protective mechanism. For example, if you swallow poison, okay, it triggers vomiting. So we've identified the stimulus. Now what are the vomiting receptors? Okay, what cells recognize the stimulus? Okay, we have cells in the uh, uh, receptors in the vestibular system. Okay, we have uh, receptors at the back of the throat. The entire gastrointestinal tract is... Uh, has a lot of receptors, the entire GIT. And then we also have the chemoreceptor trigger zone, also called CTZ. So the chemo uh, trigger zone in the fourth ventricles. Okay, so these are receptors. So, in short, we are saying many areas of the body, they have receptors that provide afferent inputs to the vomiting center okay and as, as i said distension of the stomach and the duodenum these are a strong stimulus okay you may be wondering what's the vestibular system okay when you look at the special senses that is the eye the ears uh, sense of test there's a uh, there's vestibular system which is a sensory system that is responsible for providing our brain with uh, information about motion. Okay. Head position and spatial orientation. That is called the vestibular system. That's why some people, when they are going round, round in circles, that can trigger vomiting. Okay. So the receptors are located in these areas. The vestibular system. Remember, a receptor is something that should convert a stimulus into an electrical potential, into an action potential. Because a stimulus can be in form of chemical, mechanical, it can be pressure, okay? These are not in electrical form. So we need a receptor which is called a biological transducer that should convert these, these uh, varieties of uh, signals into an electrical potential. Because the brain can only interpret electricity. Okay. So this is just a diagram just to show you the, the location of the vestibular system. 
So we've identified the vomiting re receptors. The next is the afferent fibers. What are the afferent fibers or the sensory fibers? Those, uh, they are defined as nerve fibers that carry electrical impulse from the receptors towards the vomiting centers. We have the glossopharyngeal nerve. Okay, glossopharyngeal. So this nerve is associated with the receptors found in the pharynx. Okay, that's why it's called glossopharyngeal. From the pharynx to the vomiting center. This is cranial nerve number nine. And then we also have the vagus nerve from the gastric mucosa to vomiting center. The vagus nerve is, it highly innervates the, the GIT. Okay, as I said, uh, when you looked at innervation of the GIT, the vagus nerve is part of the parasympathetic innervation. So it innervates the, especially the upper part of the GIT. It's innervated by the vagus nerve. Okay, we have also interneurons. Okay, these interneurons, they are just short neurons with, from, the, from the higher centers of, from the labyrinth, from the cerebrum, a cerebellum, I mean, to the vomiting centers. We just call them interneurons, okay? But we can, uh, for example, from the labyrinth, there is what we call the vestibulocochlear nerve. This is also, it acts as the sensory fiber, okay? taking the information to the vomiting center. Okay, so these are some of the, these are the major vomiting afferent fibers. Now, what about the vomiting center? The vomiting center is located in the medulla oblongata. Okay. The vomiting center is located in the medulla oblongata to be specific, the reticular formation of the medulla. Okay, we have, a, we have scattered group of neurons. You can just show like this. Scattered group of neurons. Okay. But, so we have our vomiting center there. We also have this area prostrema chemoreceptor trigger zone. We also have the nucleus tractus solitarius. These, they play a very important role in uh, triggering vomiting. So all the afferent information, it ends up in this area. Okay. So mainly vomiting is controlled by the chemoreceptor trigger zone. Because this one senses drugs. It senses chemicals in the cerebrospinal fluid, it also senses chemicals in the blood, okay? Because this same area prostrema, chemoreceptor trigger zone, it is outside the blood-brain barrier, okay? It is outside the blood-brain barrier. So any, any chemicals in the blood can be sensed by this area prostrema, okay? So we say this area prostrema is uh, located in the fourth floor of the ventricle. And then we have the nucleus tractus solitarius. It's also involved in uh, triggering vomiting. And then we have the, the brainstem vomiting centers. Okay. So this is uh, vomiting centers. They receive impulses from the pharyngeal stimulation. They receive impulses from pain, sights, anticipation. Okay. They, received impul they receive impulses from motion venti uh, or vertigo. There are also some drugs like opiates, chemotherapy, hormones during pregnancy. These can be sensed by the vomiting centers. Ipecac, cytotoxic drugs, irritants. Ipecac is a, an emetic drug obtained from some plant. I'm going to show you later on. So all these 
they send impulses to the vomiting center. So what are we trying to say here? The vomiting center, they are located in the reticular formation of the medulla. And we are trying to say the chemoreceptor trigger zone, it's a, it's a major controller of vomiting. Okay, because this chemoreceptor trigger zone, it's able to monitor changes in, uh, in chemicals in the body. Okay. So, we are still looking at the vomiting center. I mentioned that uh, the, the chemoreceptor trigger zone is on the fourth floor of the ventricles. When we say ventricles, what we mean? Ventricles are just communicating network of cavities in the brain. They are filled with uh, cerebrospinal fluid and they are located within the brain parenchyma uh, tissue. Okay, we have four of these uh, cavities in the brain. We have the right lateral ventricle, we have the left lateral ventricle, we have this one, the, the, the cerebral aqueduct, and we have the fourth ventricle there. So, what we are trying to say, the vomiting, the chemoreceptor trigger zone is uh, somewhere around the, f the floor of the fourth ventricle. Okay. Now, since we've described the centers, what are the efferent fibers from the vomiting centers? What are the efferent fibers from the vomiting centers? Okay, the efferent fibers include the phrenic nerve. We know the phrenic nerve is associated with the diaphragm. It innervates the diaphragm, the, the, that tough muscle of uh, respiration. Okay is associated with the diaphragm and then we have the spinal nerves to the abdominal and intercostal uh, muscles spinal nerves meaning they are coming from the spine and innervating the abdominal and the intercostal muscles okay intercostal muscles here we are talking of external intercostal muscles and uh, internal intercostal muscles and then we also have uh, different visceral autonomic fibers to the gut Okay, different visceral autonomic fibers to the GIT. And then we have also different fibers to parts of the voluntary muscles of the pharynx and the larynx. Okay. And then we have the 5th, 7th, 9th, 10th, 12th cranial nerves that innervate the GIT. We know that Cranial nerve number five is the trigeminal nerve. Cranial nerve number seven is the facial nerve. Cranial nerve nine is the glossopharyngeal. Cranial nerve number ten, this is the vagus nerve. And cranial nerve number twelve is the hypoglossal. So this innervates the GIT and they are involved in the efferent fibers. They are, in, they are part of the efferent fibers. Okay. But if you look at this... Uh, the, the visceral autonomic fibers, the myenteric plexus also is under the influence of these efferent fibers. Because remember, vomiting is just the reverse peristalsis. And we, if you remember the innervation of the digestive system, we said the myenteric plexus is involved in uh, peristaltic movement. Okay, so that's what we mean. Visceral autonomic fibers which, in a, which makes synapses with uh, these cranial nerves. Okay, what else? After describing the efferent uh, fibers, we say the last part of the reflex is what? The last part is the effector or the response. So what response are we going to see? So these efferent fibers, they will innervate muscles, they will innervate smooth muscles, they will innervate glands like salivary, salivary glands. So 
at the end of the day, we are going to see responses like nausea, a feeling of vomiting, okay, accompanied with a increased secretion of saliva. That's a response, okay, because like a glossopharyngeal nerves, they innervate the salivary glands. And also, the trigeminal nerves are associated with the salivary glands, and the facial nerves are associated with the salivary gland. So you are going to see nausea, a feeling of vomiting, and increased saliva secretion. There's this term called retching. Retching, how can you describe retching? Retching is just a strong, involuntary movement in the GIT, which starts even before somebody vomits, like trying to vomit. That's called retching. Okay? So these are the physiological response that you are going to see. Retching, to try to vomit. And then there's uh, antiperistotic waves begin, okay? A wave of contraction moving from the lower part of the GIT towards the upper part of the GIT. That is antiperistotic waves. There's also deep, uh, deep breathing, meaning that during vomiting, the respiratory centers, okay, they get involved somehow the respiratory centers of the brain. Because even the respiratory centers, they are located in the medulla of Blangat. Okay. There's deep breathing. There's the opening of the upper esophageal sphincter. In other words, the upper esophageal sphincter relaxes. Okay. The upper esophageal sphincter relaxes. There's closure of the glottis. We don't want the vomitus to enter into the respiratory tract. So it, uh, the glottis is one compartment that closes off. Then there's relaxation of the stomach and the pylorus. There is increased abdominal pressure due to the contraction of the diaphragm, due to the contraction of the abdominal muscles and the intercostal muscles. They work together just to increase the abdominal pressure. Okay, and the abdominal muscle contract. So these are the physiological response. At the end of the day, there will be expulsion of gastric content out of the GIT. Okay, so this is what we are saying. So we can just um, summarize in form of this diagram. For there to be a vomiting, there should be st stimulation occurring somewhere in the GIT. Okay. There should be stimulation occurring in the GIT. And then the afferent fibers sends the information to the to the uh, vomiting centers. Okay. They send the information to the vomiting center. We say the vomiting center are chemo receptor trigger zone and we have the nuclear structure solitarius. Okay. So, we have it here, are we able to see the efferent? We can't see the efferent, but um, the vago, the vago, the vagus, it is both a mixed nerve and a, it's a mixed nerve, meaning it can carry afferent information and efferent information. Okay, so here we are just showing, in this diagram I'm just showing you the, the involvement of the vagus nerve and the sympathetic afferents. Okay. So we have uh, compounds that can influence vomiting. We call them emetics. Okay. Emetics like ipecac from a plant called Psychotria ipecacuana. Uh, okay. Psychotria ipecacuana. It's like a Brazilian name. It's a Brazilian name from this tropical rainforest. That's why you find such kind of uh, 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 abundant plants. Okay, this one here. And then we also have apomorphin. Apomorphin is also stimulates, this one stimulates the dopamine receptors. Remember that the dopamine receptors are located on the chemo. Uh, the CTZ, the chemo receptor trigger zone, and therefore they induce 
vomiting. Apomorphine is just uh, it's just semi you can just call semi morphine. It's just morphine. Okay. But this one, the mechanism of action of epecac, it it has both it can irritate the gastric mucosa, it can also stimulate the chemo receptor trigger zone. Okay. But this one is mainly associated with uh, the stimulating the chemo receptor trigger zone. And then the anti-emetics. Uh, anti These anti-emetic drugs from the class of drugs called the serotonin antagonists. Okay. These drugs act by inhibiting serotonin receptors. So during chemotherapy, there, there may be 5-HT. Uh, this is serotonin released from uh, injury to the GI tract, which stimulates vomiting centrally. But anti-emetic drugs will inhibit, um, will inhibit, will inhibit vomiting. Okay. Anti-emetic drugs like uh, antihistamines, dopamine antagonists. Okay, those are anti-emetic drugs. Serotonin antagonists. Okay, those are anti-emetic drugs. Okay, so this is where I end for vomiting. That's how vomiting takes place. It's a reflex action. Thank you.